Hello! Welcome back. I'm Julie Torrens and we're going to be working on page two or video two on this, which is going to be negative space design or painting. So we've got this part done and that video is already up and we're going to start working on the second part of the negative space. So, first I wanted to show you what I was like. My thoughts are going a thousand miles. Now that everything's dry, I didn't forget this step, but I knew it was awfully wet and I didn't want to drag my stamps through the wetness. So what I've got here, a uh, vintage photo, black soot, hickory smoke, and ground espresso for um, inks. And I'm just gonna put those up top. I know you can't see it. This is a script stamp that is supposed to be French and it's supposed to be talking about um, botanicals. So I am using the hickory smoke and I'm just going to put this in a few places. No particular thought. I don't care if it's upside down. I don't care if it's right side up, but I just want the just a little bit of that feeling. Now I'm switching to the ground espresso, espresso, I don't know how to say it. And I'm using the bottom part. Cause again, it, it'll just give us a little different look. One more. Okay, I'm gonna set that aside. And then I have this guy. Now this I got at a garage sale it's very old. It's called a uh, quatrefoil background and it is from Stamp Abilities, but it's just kind of like, I always, I always kind of feel like it's Moroccan. But all I'm going to do, this is huge. I'm just going to set the whole block on all four and then just give it a couple of these. And yes, I know. And, and I am not using tremendous stamping techniques. I realize that. But that's because I'm not looking for that. Do you know what I mean? And these are just going to take a little moment to dry. I'm going to, do I want it on an angle? Maybe I'll do it this way. And one more time. Maybe I can kind of cross the chasm here. Maybe I should go this way. Let's try it. I realize this is going to come out here, there. That's fine. That's fine. Okay, I'm setting this down. And I'm closing up my ink. And what I decided was that I want to do a floral. So I'm just going to let this ink uh, have a chance to dry. Now, this is archival. Uh, ink from Ranger. The colors are from Tim Holtz. You can hit this with a heat gun and it will help the drying process, but it really doesn't take that long. But if I try right now to use acrylics, it will probably smear. I can see that it's really shiny, you know, so I'm just going to set this aside and let it dry. And then I've got part two of today. <laughs> so what I decided was with the floral, I'm gonna want some leaves. So I just took a couple pieces of music note paper and a couple pieces of the dictionary page and I used greens and yellows with the idea that I'm gonna make some leaves. So I'm just gonna show you how I did that quickly. I just used my Faber-Castell Gelatos. You could use any type of a um, watercolor crayon that you have and I pulled out and these are never easy to get out the green and I'll tell you what the names of them are in a minute and then this and this is a yellow so that there would be a little variety in the whole thing and this is my uh, Bright's gelato collection and it's still out there you can still get it. And I've had mine again for years. And you can say, I mean, you know, I've only had this YouTube channel for a matter of, what, four or five months. 
uh, I've used these how many times? That's how frequently I use them, but they're so heavy with pigment. Look at how, you know, I mean, they're practically full still, so this is great. Okay, this color is called Lime. This color is called something. Margarita Mix. Don't know why I didn't figure that out. And this one is called Lime Asilo. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so those are the three colors. So what I did was I just took the colors and I gave it just wanting to add some pigment. And I'll just do one. You, you know, how many times do you need to see it? And I did this with the second color. And I did this with the third color. It doesn't seem like I used the dark green. I think I used one twice. Let's get this guy in there. There we go. There we go. Okay. And then I'm just going to grab my, this is just my glue book. Oh, something fell out of it. And I got a big old brush and I just activated it. And I'm using plenty of water because I did want these to get, you know, kind of homogenized. But if there's lines in it, well, that's okay. I mean, there's lines in nature, so I don't think it would be so far off of, of the truth. Certainly, I think someone would look at it and be able to say, yeah, leaves. But I wanted them bright, and that's why I picked those gelatos, because we've got such a bright background. And I will tell you, when I was editing the first part of this two-parter, it's looking like I did the background in red. At least it's looking like that as I'm editing. And also, I did take a couple of photographs. Okay, so that's how this was. And then I just set it aside to dry. So that's what I'm going to do. Set this aside to dry. And we'll close up the glue book. So then when it was dry, I ended up with these guys. And so I'm going to cut them into some leaves. And I'm going to show you just how I'm going to do that. So I'm just going to fold this now in half. And I'm going to fold it in half again. Now I hope my scissors can get through two pages, but I think they can. And I'm just going to cut out what well, to me would be a heart-shaped leaf. And I'm gonna cut out, you know, not all of them exact, but similar. You know, like from a, from a, from a uh, same, the same plant. But they're not gonna be exact. And, the, and my scissors is going through this just fine. Okay. And so now, I should have some heart-shaped leaves. And I do. So this is going to go in my thing. Now, I can tell you right now, these are kind of big. I'm going to save them. I'm not going to get rid of them. But I'm going to make these others a little bit smaller. Because even though I'm doing a double side, what I am doing is... I'm going to do two vases, one on each page. So now these are a little bit smaller. So here's what I ended with this and that instead of this big. So you can kind of see. So that's how I'm doing this. And I just, like I said, I used music note paper and I've got some dictionary. Now, will I use all of these? To tell you the truth, I doubt it. But... I can throw these in my ephemera containers and I will use them another day. Leaves, flowers, I mean, that's just like women's faces. I do a lot of that. I enjoy it. And these can be used on, in my artist trading cards or just all kinds of things. So now I've got the dictionary page. And what I'm going to do with that is fold it again for... And I've got two sheets. Now for this, I'm just going to make it more of a 
what, teardrop kind of a shape instead of a heart. See, like that. Now I'm going to make some a little bit narrower. Like that. And one more. Maybe I'll do this one to be a little bit long and narrowish. Like that. Okay. Like that. So we've got our little stack of leaves over here that's going to go with the floral. I'm just going to save this. I think we've got enough. And now, let me introduce Julie with a hole in her head. That's me. I didn't grab something, so I'm going to grab the my book because I set it aside and I can't reach it. And I'm going to grab some um, paper to make the to make the vases. So. Here's this, I don't know how I tossed it that far. And then I'm gonna grab my folio, it's right here. Okay. So I got this cool folio, isn't that just retro and wonderful? But what I do is I keep all of my uh, jelly prints that I have in the weight. And it looks like I opened it upside down, no problem. Flip it over and I just wanna find a couple of sheets that I think would be cool for vases. This might be cool. Yeah. Should I just take the one? I think so. I think we'll just go with that one. Thanks for your patience. Now, toss that aside. And do we have a seat? Okay. So, look, I set this on there. The ink is not coming up, so I believe the ink is dry. So that's good. So now we've got another layer of goodness on our paper that we're going to be doing the reverse. Um, it's not reverse. The negative space. This was uh, music notes that I thought, but I really think we've, we're busy enough. So we're not going to be stamping that on there. Better to have more than we need than not enough. So what I was thinking of is two vases, they don't have to be the same, and then flowers on the top. So this is what I picked out. I think it's going to look great. I think it's going to look fine. So first thing I'm going to do is fold it in half. I'll do it this way so we can see the pattern. And I'm going to cut off the bottom where there isn't now there's there's like some paint and some more paint i'm not cutting off where there's paint but i am cutting off where there's just the craft paper this is the paper that i got from ordering something from joann's okay so i'm going to open this back up because i i don't want them to be the same but i i just kind of wanted this the same size ish all right, I'm gonna turn this over, grab a pencil, because what I'd like to do is I'd like a vase that they're, they're gonna have harmony because they're gonna have the same paper, but I don't want them to be completely different, but I don't want them to be exactly the same. So maybe this one, I will just do a rectangle, too big. Well, let's see. Let's see if I set it here. Hmm. I think it could be a little bit shorter. Okay, now it, it's going to look like, well, why aren't you doing this? Because I know there's this weird edge. So I am cognizant of that. And so here and here okay there's that vase number one now vase number two well let's see let's start out with a circle-ish and just try to even it out a little bit like that okay good 
So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these off at the top because this piece of, this is, this is good. We're not going to get rid of that. But I am going to tear out my vases. Because I don't want them to be exact. I'm going to tear the top and the bottom. I just think it's going to add more or like a more organic look. Like maybe these are some kind of a, a rare Peruvian pottery. You know, I just made that up. But you know what I mean. Something cool. Something that someone, when they were on vacation and they found that place that all of the tourists don't go and they found this beautiful vase and they were just stunned. See, I like that. I like that just fine. Now let's do the circle one. And while I'm tearing, let me know how you're doing. It is, we're in the second week in August here in Western Michigan. It is sunny and warm and humid, but it's a nice August day. It's, it's not oppressive. You can go outside and enjoy yourself. You can go eat lunch outside. You won't croak. It's nice. It's very nice. And again, you know, this is, I'm trying to figure out a way to fit my hand in here. Um, it, this is the kind of weather we're supposed to have in, in August in, in Western Michigan. So it's just fine. And to tell you the truth, when I first moved here, which was about a year ago, what am I doing? I thought it felt extra heavy. Um, when I first moved here, I read or heard or something, it came up that there is a lot less sunny days on this side of the state than on the east side, which is the Detroit side where I came from. And I just thought, oh, there's a lot less sun over here. And they, well, yeah, because we're right up against Lake Michigan. And because we're right up against Lake Michigan, this has a, a flat foot, and I thought, well, maybe it would look okay to have that foot on there, but nah. So yeah, they they were saying because of the of the Lake Michigan, it is very um, much more cloudy. It's kind of that lake effect thing going on. But my experience so far is we get sun. Oh, we may not have severe clear where you can just see all the way you know, to heaven, but it's not as bad as, as I was dreading, I guess. Okay, so here are our two vases. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just get some washi tape and I'm going to just washi tape them down for right now. They will be glued on, but not yet. Because if flowers and things go over the vase, which they naturally do, then I want to be able to cut those, those places out. Does that make sense? Okay, this side is angled, so I'm going to put the angle side up, and then this side seems to me to, you know, be more straight. I mean, we don't want it to look like it's ready to fall over. Yeah, I'm going to put this one that way. And I'm just putting some, and all I'm doing is I'm just taking my washi tape and I'm making a circle so that it's sticky all the way around. Just like that. And then I'm placing it. And I do want these to be, you know, somewhat the same in the, their placement. Okay. I'm going to tack that down. And there, now I've got my two vases. I like them very much. Now we're going to add the flowers. Yay! So I've got my acrylic markers. You could use a Sharpie. You could use whatever you have. And I'm just going to start 
putting in some basic flower shapes. So I'll start out, let's say, let's see, maybe this kind of a light orange. And I'm going to give it a center. And you may say, oh, I can't even see that. You will. When the time comes, you will. And I'm just making a big old petal flower, just like that. And now I'm going to put another one up here, but I'm going to make it an oval because it's going to be more facing up, not facing us. When you're doing flowers like this, you need your flowers to be facing different directions. They can't just all be facing straight at you. So I hope you can see that. And uh, I'll give it maybe a bud. We'll put a bud of this type right here. There. Okay. So we've got those in there. All right. Now let's get... Well, let's put some over here. Let's balance it out a little bit. And they don't have to be the same. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to put a circle. And I'm going to put an oval. And I'll put a bud right there. Okay. Now, grab a different color. I'm going to grab this red and I'm going to put maybe the, now I'll put the circle for this one. Put a circle and another circle and then maybe an oval here like that. And then maybe this will be a petally flower. Maybe I'll put a I'll put a center but make the petals square like that and then an ovaly one here and now these different you know some are in the back some are in the front that kind of a thing absolutely I like that and Let's do another one of these square ones. Where? Maybe right here. Why not? It's going to go over that one. Why not? There. Okay. Now, let's take a purple. And I'm going to give it one of these like like wrinkle 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 and it's like a, a triangle so I'm gonna do it over here wrinkle 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 and this one can almost go right over that page and then one sticking up here wrinkling like that Okay, I realize this is awful busy and it's even a little bit hard for me to see, but that's okay. You'll get the you'll get the, the, the drift of it if you just hang in there with me. All right, another purple one here. And this time I am gonna put where we've got the same flower inside the like same on one on each side. I I think that's fine. We'll stick a and this one's going over that flower, and that's okay. And this one we'll put, okay, right here. Good, good, good. Okay. Now, what next? Pick a color. This is a blue. And I'm going to put in one of these that I say kind of looks like a chrysanthemum, sort of, a little bit. I'm 
it's going right over that one and it's going behind behind these right over that one okay there's one let's give it another one now this one is going to end up under here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to draw right on top of this just like that and i'm going to draw on top of it again just like that and then i'll show you what we're going to do about that in in a little bit okay now one more, maybe kind of ovally shaped. It's gonna go behind the red one and maybe just a few this way. Okay, I like that really well. And I think I'm gonna do the same thing over here. There's a purple guy there. See, I even have to, you know, pay attention because I, you know, having one behind the other in front of the other, sure. But you still have to, it's going to be able to make some sense of it. Like I said, I realize this is hard for you to see. It's hard for me to see. And when you do it yourself, you're going to have a hard time seeing it yourself but it'll all come together, you'll see. And let's put one here. And I'm going to go behind. There's a, a light round one there. Okay, good. And maybe one right here. And it's gonna go right on this in on this vase. One more time. Okay. All right. So next step is going to be to fix our vases. So, I'm grabbing some scissors. Big scissors for a small job, but that's okay. And taking off my washi, and I'm gonna cut out where that was. So I'm just cutting out where I went over. And then I'm gonna to have to redraw that in there, but that's okay. But this is what's going to, I think, put the vase in its place. You know, the vase is gonna be with some flowers on top. So see, that's gonna go like that. And then I'm just gonna to have to refill this in. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here. So I'm taking off my vase. I'm making a little garbage pile over here. And why when I have a garbage can over here? No telling, no telling. Okay, let's see. So now I'm gonna cut this vase out where that flower was. Are you totally confused? I hope not. Hang in there with me. The anticipation should be just, it is for me, should be just palpable. Okay. We should be done with our scissors. And this is going here. Right? Yes, now we can glue our vases in. So let's get this, and I'm gonna get my glue stick.
My air conditioning is running, living upstairs, and now the western sun is, is coming in my living room. So this is when my, my place likes to really cool off. <laughs> All right, now line up our flower. Oh, that looks crooked. Something's wrong. Let's figure this out. Okay, that looks better. It is what it is. Okay, let's glue this one down. Are you having fun? Now, one thing I wanted to tell you. I said that if I really like this, I might do it on a canvas, and that's absolutely true. But this pink background that looks like red to you, but it is a, a fluorescent pink. I mean, and it's pinky pink. It's not red. Um, it You will find all fluorescent colors are fugitive, meaning they are not color fast. And since they are not color fast, if you do them on a canvas, it will fade. Now, it may just darken. It may vanish. There's no saying. There's no telling. So, I would not use this fluorescent pink because of that. Okay, so now I'm going to just finish up my flower here. And I may not have it exactly the way it was. It doesn't matter. We've got what we wanted, which is a flower that's going over the vase, which I think adds that um, one is pushed back, you know? Some of the flowers are literally in front of the vase. Okay, so we got our flowers back. Now, here's where the magic's gonna start. We are going to start, I think, I'm just giving it one more look. Do I feel like I have enough on this page? I really feel like I do. All right, let's get out. I saved this, don't need this, and I saved this purple. Now, this is called, oh my, why do they put this over the name? I don't know what it's called. I don't know that they make it anymore. I got it at Tuesday morning, it's folk art. It's a purple color and it is um, opaque, it says. So I'm just gonna give this a bit of a squeeze because I don't know if it's separated. And this is that weird paint that is kind of cottage cheesy, but it's called a gel acrylic. So we're just going with that. That's the way it looks. But I've used them on other projects and they're great. I've got my acrylic brushes. I'm gonna start out small, but I'm gonna get that square brush out. I'm getting a small square brush out. I'm getting a round brush out and we'll just see where we can go with this. So I am covering up everything that is not a flower or that's not the vase. Make sense? You know what I didn't add? I think I'm gonna leave it. I was gonna say I didn't add stems, but I don't think that the stems need to show the pink. So we're gonna, we're gonna just let that be for right now. And let's get started filling some of this in. I'm wetting my brush. I've got some paper towels for dabbing on. I'm starting with the round brush because I'm going to get into the close areas. This is like if you're painting your house, I'm doing the cutting in. And I realized this may take a moment. And if this paint is not as opaque as they claim, I don't care. Do you know what I mean? I, if, if my background shows through, I still think you'll be able, unlike now, to differentiate the flowers from the background.
And so that's what I'm doing. And if I don't get it perfect, I'm not going to be upset about it. And it kind of looks messy when you first do this. But just, you know, like I said, you've got, everything's got to go through an ugly phase. So this is the ugly phase. When you don't have the background. I've got to just keep looking because it's so easy to go over a place. And I could try to rub this paint out, you know, like if I made a mistake. It will never completely come out, I promise. This is highly pigmented, and I can just tell it would be very hard to rub it off. Oh, it probably could be done, but I would just work around it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't try. I'm working not only around these flowers, but I'm working in the seam, so that's slowing me down a little bit. And once I get this edges done, then you'll see that it goes fast to get it filled in. And what I'll try to do is get a good section done and then go ahead and start. Oh, see, I went right onto the vase. That's okay. That's fine. But uh, I'll try to get, you know, an area that I can then fill it in. This vase is is kind of the same color as what's underneath it, which is that green color. So it's all right. What I'm going to do about it is I'm just going to round this corner and I'm going to round this corner. There. Done. Okay. So Okay, so th can you see the, the negative space, what I'm doing? Let's get a bigger brush, wet it, dab it, get some purple, and fill her in. We can go a little bit faster now. I'm hoping you can see what's going on better than I can because I'm so close up. Hoping. I don't know if it's true, but I'm hoping. And I can go up here and I can go here. This is because I tore it, you know, it's rumply. So I want to get the purple up to the edge of the vase. And right off the edge here. And let's get some more purple going. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Now, if you're watching me now and you were entered in, it's the video that has the collage with the woman. It's a magazine collage and the woman has all the arms. That is, if you commented on that one, then you were in a drawing. And I've heard from two out of the three people. So if you're catching this, let me know because there is no, I don't, I don't want to, you know, just say, well, you didn't get in contact with me. And we gave it like a week for you to get in touch with me. And I'm, I'm hoping you do. Cause you got a nice prize. I think it's, just me, I think that's the name. So take a look and get your information so that I can mail you your gift. Okay, we're almost to a point where I'm going to have to start slowing down again. There, okay, I can go a little bit more. I'll tell you, if I start getting daring with this brush, I, I'm often sorry. <laughs> All right, let's see about, I can see here where I can go a little bit crazy.
I'm sorry I got quiet. It's because I'm concentrating. Okay. I'm getting excited. All right. I'm going to turn my book around. And I'm going to start working on this side. And let's get some of the little brush going again. And do some of this. Oh, there was a purple flower there. That's okay. I just I just touched into the wrinkly bottom a little bit. That's okay. It's not going to hurt it a bit. So those of you in the UK and, uh, and other parts where it's been so hot, I heard you had a reprieve, which I'm so grateful for. And so if, are you back to being a little bit more seasonally typical for you? Because, I mean, that heat was serious. Yeah. Think about people that maybe are homeless. And maybe, you know, I don't know. Maybe there are no homeless. Maybe that's just a U USA kind of a thing. That'd be great. There's nothing more tragic than seeing those that are homeless. But you could certainly perish in this horrible heat that there was. But here, in at least where I live now, when I lived in Arizona, we had the same thing. We had what's called cooling stations. And it would be churches, or maybe the Y, the YMCA. Um, different organizations would open up and have bottled water and have a place that you could come in and relax, maybe take a shower and uh, get out of the, the horrible, horrible heat. And that does seem like it would be important. Are you seeing it more? Are you, are you seeing the, the picture unfold a little bit more? This is one of those things that if you see in just like a time lapse with a voiceover, you really don't realize the, the, the time, the effort, and it just seems so, so simple, but it isn't. But it does give you a chance to see something and then you can say to yourself, you know, that's something I'd, I'd like to, to do. But then you may need something a little slower or maybe you can just watch it over and over. I don't know. I, I used to call those videos fast hands because it would be like, like me here where um, you just have the, you're, you're seeing the, the work area and someone's hands doing the work. And so then they had it all speeded up so that the process that took literally hours, maybe even more than one day, and you see the whole thing start to finish in 10 or 15 minutes. Yeah, I used to call that fast hands. I want to watch a fast hands video. You know what? Yep. Watching these people doing their thing. And sometimes they'd voice over, so at least you could get a narrative of, of what was going on. Sometimes it was just music. But it was still fun. Definitely fun. Okay, where am I going now? There's another purple one that I almost ran right over. You know, I was getting ready to make this video, the, you know, the part one. I have finished off 
like four journals, art journals, all at one time. So my little square mixed media, full. My other one like this, full. Uh, what else? There was, uh, oh, the one that was, that I got from the, from the thrift store that had a plain paper in it, full. I was like, oh my word. So I'm going to be having to make from a, you know, altered book. Flowers for a friend. We all know that one. That's almost full. So I have got to make myself at least make one journal and then maybe buy one or make one that is out of uh, maybe art papers. I've, I've got art papers. I mean, I, I have uh, like a, a sheet that's, I don't know, big as my desk that's designed to, you know, cut you cut it to size. That's um, Strathmore 400, no, yeah, Strathmore 400 watercolor paper, huge sheets of it. But I can cut it down to whatever size I want. Okay, here's another one of these purple guys. You know what I really like now that I'm this far? I love those vases. I think they came out beautiful. And you know, there's just another thing when people, well, what do I do with these gel uh, sheets? Look, look what you can do. They're so beautiful. You can do so much. I'm just making sure I'm not mowing over something here as I do this purple flower. Okay. We're getting there, folks. We're getting there. Thank you so much for hanging in there with me. I appreciate it so much. I was watching The Frugal Crafter. Lindsay Wyrick is her name, but if you're looking for her YouTube channel, it's The Frugal Crafter. And she um, did a little haul because it's, uh, like I said, it's August right now, August 20, uh, 2022. And she was talking about how there's just been some amazing sales on art supplies in August. And she said that she's experienced this before. She doesn't know if it's, you know, like colleges and kids starting back to school. Because, you know, if you're taking art school in college, you can spend a fortune on art supplies, and there are art supplies that you need to buy. Uh, so she didn't know if it was that or what, but she said like Black Friday and um, Cyber Monday, all that. She's never found good. And I, ha I have to tell you, I feel the exact same way. You know, to me, Amazon Prime Days, well, if you want to buy something that's an Amazon product, you you know and, and they've got art supplies but if you're looking for you know let's say uh arches 100 percent cotton watercolor paper it, it's not going to be on sale on i don't think it's just not it's 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 more electronics and things like that and so you know i had looked there but i shop at jerry's artorama I have, I don't, there's not a store like that here. I have to do that online. Um, there's a, there's an art supply called Cheap Joe's. Um, I've not been there, but maybe, maybe once I was. It might have been a link that I clicked on for a art supply that somebody was using. I, I think, I think I did do that once. Um, Blick, we'll see where I came from in the Detroit area. I live near a Blick store. So I could check things and I could even, you know, do the curbside type where I could pick out what I needed. And, you know, they have good prices and it, it's pretty unusual for them to have deep discount sales because they're already quite discounted. And many times I have to kind of weigh the cost because like Bic, Blick, not Bic, Blick, they have a Amazon store. 
I don't know if Jerry's Artorama does or not. I don't know. I've never looked into it, but um, there's been times that I've bought from Blick from the Amazon store so that I could get my Amazon Prime free shipping. But uh, I was on the site after after listening to her, and yeah, Blick and Jerry's Artorama, when it came to watercolors, when it came to acrylics, they literally have stuff on sale. And some of these prices of things, I know, you know, I've seen them with their normally advertised discount, and it's lower than that. I think these are items that maybe come the new year, it's going to be an, an, you know, a new improved model, and they're getting rid of old stock. That's my guess. Now, I could be as wrong as rain. I don't know. Okay, enough of the small stuff, huh? Let's see if I can wrap up this side. But there's still more work to do. Even though I get once I get the purple done, it's not over. No. So, again, thank you for hanging in there with me. But frankly, this is how I think you learn. And especially if you craft along. This is how you can really learn a technique. And do I have it nailed? Am I perfect? No. Don't even try to claim to be that. But... And we may not get this done today. We may not. I really don't like my videos to run over an hour because by the time you get that far, there's very few people even watching anymore. And I just know how long I want to be on a video. But I'm hoping to get it done. I want to see it done. I'm excited to see what it looks like. Okay. That side's done. This side, we're getting there. I'm going to do just a little bit more of the wide part here. Just because it makes my hand feel good to move around a bit. I'm just making sure I'm not cutting something off. So when it's summer, like it is here, now, do you find you cook less? I, I find that I do cook a little bit less because it's so warm, but I'm, you know, I'm still eating healthy. Well, as healthy as I eat, but, um, you know, it's, it's, it, I, I'm more easily satisfied with a sandwich or a salad than I am, you know, with a... Now, I'll eat the food. I will eat a bowl of chili 24-7. Doesn't matter what it's like. But I don't know that I want to stand at the stove and cook it in this heat. So, yeah, I'm, I, I definitely have different eating patterns. But then you reach a point, and I'm there, that I really want some food food. So I'm going to be making myself some lemon chicken. And then I can um, have another meal from it. And it's still, it's not the same as a lunch meat sandwich. Or um, when I make lemon chicken, if I just use my regular uh, chicken salad recipe, it makes a delicious chicken salad. Okay, I'm just looking for lines that I don't want to go over now I'm not baking I'm not baking cookies although one thing that is handy is if you buy like those cubes of cookie dough they're in the refrigerated section at least the ones that I buy or you know what we have here in, in the US they're in the um, refrigerated section, like by that pop and fresh type of dough things. But it's like a little flat container and it has these nuggets and then you can just put these cookie dough nuggets on your cookie sheet and then you can just like do one round. So you're not doing tray after tray after tray like when you make a, a recipe from scratch. 
so you don't have to have your oven going the whole long day and you can just have like enough cookies for today and tomorrow. That That's fun in the summertime. And then in the winter, then I don't mind, you know, filling up a tin and, and I'll share them, you know, local family and all that. But yeah, I'm to the point where, yes, it's hot, but I'm turning the oven on tonight because I'm ready for some, what I call, you know, real food. I've got some potatoes to throw in the roaster. I've got, uh, what else did I, have? oh, sweet potatoes. Now, I like sweet potatoes the next day just fine. So, I'm going to probably throw some sweet potatoes, maybe a couple in the oven while the oven's going. And then I can just heat them up on top of the stove tomorrow or the next day. And that's fine. I like sweet potato fries. I don't know what you would call them. I know you guys in the, in the UK, French fries are chips. So I don't know what you would call the sweet potato ones, but they make chips at the restaurant that are sweet potatoes and I, I love them. I mean, I don't think they're a whole lot more healthy than other French fries. And I don't, I don't think they're fried. I think they're baked, but I'm not positive. I don't know how they make them in the store. You can buy them in a bag in the freezer section and then you spread them out on a cookie sheet and you bake them and after so long you turn them and then after so long then you eat them and you know that's delicious but I don't know in a in a restaurant I don't know how they cook them but I love them I know that some friends of mine found some recipes for your um I don't have one what is it called? it's like air fryer to do some um Sweet potato fries, and they said they they turned out awful. They told me don't bother. Well, I don't I don't have one of those machines. I don't know that I want one. I I just don't know. I mean I, at so far I haven't missed it. So. But to do it for sweet potato fries, and I'll tell you, that may have been very tempting. But. They said it was, they were terrible. And it wasn't just one person that said they were terrible. The whole family said, no, don't do that again, mom. So it's like, okay, I get it. That's not the way to go. All right, how we doing? We're, we're really getting there. Is it, is it looking like something to you? Because quite honestly, I am still just getting the close-up version. So I'm really not seeing like the demarcations yet. But it should be starting to look like something. Negative space. Blotting it out. I think I just have this little space right here. What do you think? And then I'll see how we're doing for time. Oh, went over the purple flower. Those were the hardest ones for me to see. I don't know why. It feels like my paint on my brush is so dry, but it's not. It's not dry on my paper plate, so I don't know what's going on. Sometimes you do have to just rinse your brush out and start again, but I am so close to being done, I just really don't want to do that.
Are we done? I think so. Okay, this brush can go in the drain. I'm gonna take my, look, I still have a little bit of paint left, not much. I'm going to go over some of the places that just look, again, like, like a, it doesn't look artistic, it just looks like I, I missed. Or I, you know, it, it got too thin on my brush. I've got just another spot at the bottom. Okay, I'm turning this around. Anyway, like I feel like you like you should be putting a seatbelt on or something. Okay. So here we are. And up here. It just looks a little too painterly. Do you see what I see? Hmm? Let me know in the comments. That's like, I have no idea what you're doing, Julie. Or, yeah, yeah, I get it, I get it. Negative space design. Okay. Okay, it looks good. Let's see. I'm setting my palette down. I'm gonna check the time. Oh, okay. So the next time we get together, we're gonna to add stems, we're gonna add the leaves, and we're going to add some details, a little bit in the flowers, kind of like the blue ones, where you know the flowers have some definition, but the background still shows through. In the meantime, thank you for hanging in there with me while I, you know, it's like watching paint dry. I'm sorry, but this is a part of the process. I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Like and subscribe. Share with your friends. Thanks.